let's open our Bibles without any further ado. Let's open our Bibles. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and let me get my iPad going. Hallelujah. Go with me to 1 Thessalonians. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Thessalonians. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. I'm excited for tonight. God is speaking to us tonight. How many people got their answer Sunday? I know I did. Hallelujah. I know I did. Say with me, I did. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we always have to come to church always with expectancy in our heart, knowing that God speaks to us. Amen. We're not just hearing scripture and forgetting about it. We're hearing scripture and living by it. Amen. Notice, notice <laughs> first Thessalonians, the third chapter, verses 10. The Bible says, and he put, well, I'm not there. I, I, it flipped wrong. There you go. The third chapter. Verses 10, night and day, praying exceedingly, exceedingly, that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. So in other words, seeing your face and that God may perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now notice this, this is so important. We've talked about it um, Sunday, but we're going to continue um, perfecting that which is lacking in your faith. Well, really, it's really maturing, really. How many people know that we've got to mature in God and everything? Yeah. Every day is a maturing process. You just don't mature overnight. It's a process. It's the Word of God working in us every time we get in the Word. Amen. The Word that he, that he might perfect that which is lacking, that word perfect, getting the equipment, you need to stay on course. You need answers, ladies and gentlemen, especially in these days that we live. We need answers to our questions. So we're going to get the equipment that we need to stay on course. And, many, and that equipment is the word of God. In, inside that word, there's so much revelation. It's also to be perfected, established, and settled. I want to be settled and established on his word. That word perfection also is the condition or state or quality of being free or as free as possible from all flaws. It would be possible from all flaws. See, we have to desire to be free from all flaws or defects. I tell you, Satan made a mess out of this world when Adam and Eve uh, gave in to him. But nevertheless, thank God for Jesus. Jesus came and perfected us, but there's things that we're still working on. Can you say amen? He's working on us, and let him work on you. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good process. Amen. So it's the action or process of improving something until it is faultless or as faultless as possible. You and I can be faultless. Come on, church. People say, well, pastor, we can never be faultless. Well, the word of God says that we're on that path toward it. And he's coming for a perfect church, right? Come on. He's coming for a church without blemish. Where does that happen? In heaven? No, it happens here on earth. It happens while we're here on earth. Oh, Father, oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see this. You are going to be changed into the image of your Father here on this earth, here while we work. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, uh, it's quite interesting. Billy Brim said the other day, she says, we're going to be, light, we're gonna be uh, bold lights walking across this land. People are going to see us bold lights. Light rays, rays coming out of our eyes. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I was at a church one time preaching at my, uh, uh, my uh, I guess my cousin uh, years ago. And there was a woman that met me after and we're talking and pastors and all. She says, oh, my God, your eyes, your eyes, your eyes. And I said, what's wrong? Oh, my God, your eyes. So I finally realized, I said, yes, yeah, the anointing of God. It's the anointing of God. Amen. So we thank God for that. Amen. Go with me to Genesis, the 17th chapter. We're going to talk about perfection, but we're going to see something that we've probably never saw and we've heard. Um, I make coffee every morning, and I, and I try to bring a cup to my wife. And she'll say, oh, thank you. And then I say, how do, you, how do you like it? She says, oh, God, it's so good. It tastes so good. I, we have a saying around the house, I made it with love. Everything that we do, I made it with love. It can be, she can bring, she can heat me a, a piece of toast and she'll say, I'm bringing it, I made it in love. Amen. Now, notice this, this is a good thing. The Lord told me the other day, he says, by you saying that, you'll really put me in to your life, everyday life. Well, coffee, simple thing as coffee. 
you're putting God in it, right? I made it with God. I made it with love because God is love, right? Now notice what it says in Genesis, the 17 chapter, verses, verses 1. The Bible says this. Now, I tell you, this is amazing. As I was studying, the Holy Spirit speaking strong. That's why I, I, I encourage you, oh gosh, listen uh, to the message. If you miss a service, listen to it. Don't let it pass you by. It says, and when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, how, how old was he? 99. So tell me, you're complaining about your age now? Think about 99. God's still speaking. Amen. And when Abram was 99 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Amen. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Well, if you're going to walk before God, you're going to be perfect. Moses, when he was with God up in the mountain, he had to put a veil over his head because the power of God was burning strong out of him that people, I mean, he could not get the people to see him that way. And so understand that when you're close to God, that image of God gets in you and the perfection of God starts working in you. Oh, come on, church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. So we see something, but notice what he said here. And this is where I want to show you. And I will make my covenant. God is speaking to Abram. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Say with me exceedingly. This is what God does when, you, when, when he comes on board in your life. He multiplies you exceedingly. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to tell the devil, devil, back off. God is exceedingly blessing me. He's blessing me exceedingly. Hallelujah. Amen. But the thing that we see here, he made a covenant. And it's a blood covenant. Covenant makes a difference. When you gave your life to Jesus, you covenant with him, and it makes a difference. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. We don't have time to go there, but in Galatians, it says, the blessing of Abraham is on you because of Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, the blessing of Abraham is on you. Can you say amen? So in other words, the covenant is still working today. <laughs> amen. He made a covenant with, with Abram, and that covenant still overshadows us today. We can say this, the blessing is still working in me because of Jesus, that Jesus put on my life through Abraham. Hallelujah, through the blessing of Abram. Amen. And so the blessing of Abraham makes you perfect. There's things that you have to do to get this perfection. You've got to stay close with God. You've got to incline thy ear to hear the Lord. You've got to press in. That's why I told you a couple Sundays ago, press in, church. Press in like never before. Stay connected. Uh, this is a time to get closer to God. This is a time to get that word and get revelation in that word. God is speaking to the church. Hallelujah. He will not leave us orphans. He loves us. He's our father. He will not leave us orphans. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for the covenant. But we have to rely that God's blessing is on us. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Now, go quickly to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We're going to move right into it gradually so that you can see. So in other words, covenant makes a difference. You have that covenant right now. Right now, you're living in that covenant by the blood, of, by the blood covenant that God made with Abram, right? Now, notice what he says in, in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses 8. Now, wherefore he saith, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captive, captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, this is a powerful thing here. Now that he ascended Jesus, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. Well, he had to do some business in, in hell. He had to get all those that were just in that, in that place of, 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 of waiting period and had to get them out, right? That's where we have all the, the people of old that came out. And the Bible says that he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now notice this verse 12. Now you have to see this for what we're talking about tonight, the perfection that God has for us. The Bible says he's gave us the fivefold gifts according to verse 11. Say with me, amen. Thank God for those gifts. Thank God for pastors in our life. Thank God for teachers, evangelists. Oh my goodness. Thank God for the prophets, apostles. Hallelujah. Amen. 
They're not gone. It's not over. People say, well, pastor, uh, you know, th we, don't, we don't live in that time. No, 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 no. There's still prophets today. There's still apostles today. Come on, church. There's still evangelists. There's still teachers out there. Hallelujah. Amen. And it, the Bible says he gave them for the perfecting of the saints. Now, that's why the devil will try to diminish the work of a prophet or the pastor or the, or the teacher or, the, or, the, or, or so forth, right? He gave them so that they can perfect the saints. Folks, that's you and me, perfection, hallelujah, amen. And for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse 13, say with me, amen. Till we all come in the unity today, 97% of the United Nations voted against Russia for the first time ever in history to get 97% of countries. I tell you, Russia's alone right now. They need God or, or, or uh, Putin. Amen. Now notice this, till we come in the unity, uh, the church has to be like the United Nations, greater than the United Nations, coming in, into agreement. Yes, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or woman unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Folks, we're on, we're on our way there. Amen. And it comes through the word of God being preached to us. It comes by the word of God given, spoken to us by teachers and prophesied and given it to us by instructions of apostles and, and so forth, right? So it, it's available to us now. Now notice the blood covenant's got us to this point. Now it's up to us to get moving into this direction of perfection. And if you can see this, I like correction. Amen. I like correction. I like direction. I like protection. But I'm telling you what, all that has to come into place so that we can reach into that time of perfection. And it's now. Say it me, it's now. Hallelujah. Amen. So perfection, and I know that I'm moving pretty quick, so for you that are taking notes, but I, I, it's just, I'm just excited. Amen. Perfection is a development process. Come on. The purpose for this perfection, it is for the work of God. Now notice this. Every one of us in this building and those that are watching and everyone in this world has a plan from God. Everyone. No one is exempt. Well, God, you know, forgot me. No, he didn't. Everyone is exempt. We're going to see this in the Word. Everyone. So, a development process means we got to get in that word. Well, we got to get into a church. We got to get into that place of, of, of oneness and unity in the word. Because, you know, I, I love studying at home, but it's, does it, it doesn't replace the church functions. Because in the church, it, it, the anointing is quickening to us, is speaking to us, and, and he's here where there's two or three together. Yes, he's with us at home, but there's something about the word of God coming from, from a gift from heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God. As your pastor, I love it when I get up here and he just starts filling my mouth with, with his word, and I get so excited that I have to say, oh, God, I, uh, no one can think like that, only God, but the word of God puts you in those places. Amen. So perfection is a, is a development process. And let the Lord perfect you. I mean, you know, correction is good. Say with me, amen. Direction is good, amen. Come on, church. A protection, we need it, especially now. But perfection is, is really the, the ultimate process that God is doing with me. Amen. Look at verses 15 now. Now, well, let's look at uh, verses 14, that we henceforth be no more children, no more children. Remember, children, um, you can tell children anything, they'll believe you. That's why it's so important what you tell children. Amen. That we henceforth be no more children. If you promise them an ice cream, you better fulfill it. Uh, that, <laughs> that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about every wind of doctrine. Send me wind of doctrine. Now, this is, this is something important. Wind of doctrine means it's blowing through. Winds do blow through, but this has the wind of doctrine. So you've got to be prepared for those winds that are contrary to the doctrine of the word of God. Uh, that come in the winds of doctrine by slight of men, the slight of men and cunning craftiness, uh, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Deceive. It, it's deceiving. It, it is low. It's a low blow for 
for people that don't know the word. Now, if you're a child and, and don't know the word, then, then you better hook up quick in these days that we're living. And, and all of us need to hook up quick to the word of God. Now's the time to stay closer to the Word of God than ever before. Amen. I can imagine as a young born again believer that got born yesterday, thank God for the mercy of grace, but we've got to immediately bring them in and say, hey, connect with the church. Immediately get in, get in a good word church, a word, don't get into those sloppy agape churches. Get into that real fired up church. Hallelujah. Amen. Get in there. Amen. One of these developments that we're speaking about in verse 15 is, is look at it, but speaking the truth in love that you may grow up unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. Now, let's stop here tonight. Verses 15, speaking the truth in love that you may grow up in him. Now, notice this, speaking the truth in love. What I just read you, is this, is this the truth? Come on, is this the truth? It is the truth, right? And you see love all over it. Love of, of protection, of, of, of equipping us and preparing us, right? Now notice this. Uh, when I make coffee in the morning and I take it to Pastor Christine, I said I made it with, with, with love. What does that mean? It's the truth. Because I love my wife. You know, I want to make the most, I, we, we really studied how to make coffee, I'm telling you what. <laughs> we had to really know how to do it, amen. So we know coffee, amen. The thing about that is, is I speak the truth. I'm not saying it just because it's just phony baloney. I'm saying it because it's the truth. I love her and I made it with love. Come on. So in other words, I'm speaking the truth. So in other words, truth and love go hand in hand. When somebody gives you the truth of the word of God, it's supported by the love of God. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Have you ever talked to somebody that is totally in the left field? That, well, maybe they don't know they're in the left field of the Word of God, but they're so dogmatic that they're so, they're so persistent that they're correct and you're wrong. Have you ever noticed how, how it gets out of line? Love, just they move away from love. They be, you become an enemy to them from that moment on. Doesn't matter if you, you were raised together, you become an enemy, and, and it takes God. Now, God talks about things like this. That's the wind of doctrine, but you have to look at it. As a born-again believer, look at truth and look at, look at love supporting it. Everything we do has to be in truth in these days and love support. Now, please forgive me. I'm gonna say something, uh, and I gotta be careful. When you hear politicians, when you hear people, and you know, now I'm not talking about fact checking and all that, I, I'm, I know personally, personally, by studying that they're lying through their teeth, but have you noticed they're not saying it in love? They've got, they've got an agenda behind it, right? If love will control them, their mouth will follow truth. Do you see what I'm saying? If I love you, and I do, then I'm going to speak to you in truth. I can't speak to you in, in, in lying. First of all, I can't lie. I'm doomed to hell. I, I'm, I'm, you know, that, that you can't lie. But this is where we have to come to. Look at that scripture again, and that's why I want to focus on this. But speaking the truth in love so that you may grow up into him in all things. You can't grow to become like Jesus if you're not walking in truth. You can't grow to be like Jesus if there's no love. So in other words, when you and I encounter the truth, you're going to find love supporting it, and vice versa. Do you, got, do you get me with church? Amen. One of those developments that we have to work on, and this is where the church has to work in, especially now, we've got to work in the area of truth supported by love. Amen? Now, 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 Pastor, what do you mean? Well, get into the Word of God. Get the truth of the Word of God. And I want to encourage young babies that don't know the Word, don't get out and try to tell somebody what you think the Word says versus someone that has already been trained under the Word. I mean, Holy Ghost trained. Had, you know, it's like me going to Kenneth Cope and tell Cope, no, that can't be true, Kenneth No, 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 no. Now, that, you can't do that. Why? Because he's a man of God. He's paid a price. He's got longevity behind him. Many longevity in the Bible, the Word of God. You see what I'm saying? So we have to remember something. I have to stay where I'm Go with me to 2 Timothy. Amen. Uh, Holy Ghost is speaking to us. So in other words, you're going to judge things by the truth 
and by love. If there's no love behind what they're saying, it's not truthful. Pastor, I promise you, I'm saying the truth. And I'm getting upset, Pastor. You're making me upset because you're not believing me. Well, you should get upset if it's the truth. Come on, truth doesn't lie. Amen. Can you say amen? Now, notice what it says in 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 3. And this is for every Christian, every pastor, every, every person. This is perfection. This is what we're moving into perfection. Amen. Uh, 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 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, are you there? Verses 3. Well, the Bible says, Preach the word. Amen. Be instant in season and out of season. Repro re reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Now, let me, let me stop here. Is this the truth? You got to speak to me, church. Is this the truth? Where's the love? This is love. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Rebuke, repu reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Notice what it says here. Uh, speak these things along with the Word of God. Now, the Word of God has the truth. The Word of God has love. But notice this, people don't like to get rebuked today by the truth. I talked uh, not too long ago about submitting. You remember the word submitting? Well, today's generation, they don't like that word submitting. Oh, no, Pastor, uh, you're old-fashioned. Uh, you're, you're just, I don't know. But submitting is not what you think. Submitting is just, Allowing your life to submit under the process of God. Come on, church, amen. Submit one to another. I mean, even husbands and wives, submit to one another. Let God work in your marriages by, by just giving into one another in the area of love and, and learning. You know what I'm saying? I tell you, that this machoism in, in different cultures is one of the things that God has to deal with in these days that we're living. So, where, is this truthful? Say with me, amen. Amen. Where's the love? It's there. The love's there, but you, how you receive these things will prove to you where you are in love. Amen? Look at what it says in verse 5. Are you with me? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But watch thou in all things endure infliction. Endure infliction. We've been talking about suffering. Do the work of an evangelist. Make foolproof thy ministry. Come on. Make foolproof thy ministry. In other, words, in other words, we've got to get busy in the things of God. Make foolproof of it. As a believer, lead people to Jesus. As a believer, you've got to get busy bringing people to the kingdom of God. Come on, church. Amen. We've got to get busy. We've got to start doing this. Mario Murillo said last night, churches, if you guys will, pastors and churches, if you guys will make an extra effort to bring the hurt into church, they'll get saved. You'll see people get saved, especially now that we're living. Today, I got a report from Ukraine. Ukraine is needing Bibles in the midst of war. They're saying, we need Bibles. We need a comfort of God. We need Bibles. Uh, so what do we do? We're going to send Bibles. Ministries are sending Bibles. They're getting everything ready. Hallelujah. I love to see ministries coming together, sending all kinds of aid along with everything else. But Bibles, praise God. Amen. So in other words, uh, let me ask you something. It says here, verse 4 says, and they shall turn away their ears. Well, are you with me? Am I reading the same one? Verses, verses 3. Verses 3, the time will come. Oh, did I read that to you already? Oh, okay, wait, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, that's probably why. Uh, okay, where are you at? Where are you guys? Go with me to 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 3. Now notice what it says. For the time will come, verses 3, that's it. I kind of got jumped ahead of me. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, which is the truth of the word of God, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So in other words, they're not going to be going after true doctrine, which is the word of God. They're going to go after what appeals to their flesh and what they need to hear in these days that they're living. Now, is this true, what you just read? Yes, it is. Where's the love? It's there. The love is there. That means people in these days are going to be leaving the truth, which has the word, and which is the love, and they're going to be going to, what's the opposite of, the love, of truth? Lie. So if they're going to where the lie is at, there's no love there. They're going to be doing, they're going to be doing trickery. It's, it's, a, it's an evil agenda. Come on, can you say amen? So in other words, uh, uh, if you look at it, what's a fable? Fable, I wrote in the margin of my Bible, it's a fiction, error. 
It's her heresies. It's seduction. But notice this. A fable, a, a fable is an unverified story. It's unverified. Folks, this is where you've got to be careful in these days that we're living. When preachers come to you preaching you another gospel, that's unverified. What do you mean, Pastor? Unverified by the truth of the Word of God. Now, notice this. If you don't know the Bible, if you're, if you're a baby Christian and, and you're getting seduced in these ways, uh, you've got to really connect strong with somebody. I love it when I read something. When you go to church, find somebody that's elderly there that, can, that you can hook up with. And I said, that's pretty interesting. If you're single, find another single person that you could connect with and learn the Word of God together. If you're married, and find couples your age that you could just have Bible study. But don't dismiss the teaching of the Word of God. And that's so true. I remember when Pastor Christine and I were first dating. Now think about this, Pastor Christine. When you and I were first dating, our friends were older people. They had children already. They had children already. And we would say, isn't it so neat to see how they raise their children? Isn't it so neat how they talk to each other? Isn't it so neat? And they just took, we just did it because they were nice and we became friends. But later on, I realized God was teaching us how our future would be if we would connect with people that love God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. I, you know, I get so, I get so, I get so, uh, I love, I went to Mexico City and I spent almost a week with a, a missionary statesman. And, and uh, he, at that time, he, he's 90 something years old now, probably close to 100. But uh, I learned so much by being under his roof for, three, for about a week. So much, so much, so much. Him and his wife, so much, so much. Oh gosh, the anointing on this man. I, when I would carry his Bible to the pulpit, oh, he preached so powerful. But the love that he had for the people and the truth of the word of God. And he would correct people, but he did it in love, right? Can you say amen? So a fable is an unverified story. You don't know or you don't want to be under that type of teaching. Why? Because it's, an, it's, it's unproved, it's unverified. You know, when I hear people study Greek and Hebrew, I'm very careful with that. Greek and Hebrew is a very strong teaching, but you've got to understand, to understand Hebrew and Greek, you've got to understand the times that they talked about at the time that they wrote it and who they were talking to and what people group he's talking to. Because you can really get off, and there's a lot of people that have studied so much Greek and Hebrew that they're left field, they're way out there, they're in the spaceship. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and then they look at you like you're dumb, you don't know anything. Come on, church, we've got to be careful with this stuff. Come on, church, amen. So we have to understand that. Notice, notice what it says in Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses three in the Amplified. I'm going to read it to you from the Amplified, okay? For the time is coming when people will not tolerate or endure sound and wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to cons to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own likings and to foster the error they hold. Now notice this, that means they're fostering their error, so they're looking for those people. And that's why we find people that are jumping church, going from what, folks, I told you not too long ago, stay with those teachers that stick to this church. Stay with those that your pastor stays under. I mean, I, I understand there's so many prophets out there, but I'm not going to be listening. And quit sending me uh, links to other prophets. I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not going to listen to other prophets. I'm going to listen to those that are verified by the body that I attend to, by the ones that I've been taught, instructed under. Those are the ones. Now, they may be good or not, but listen, how many fingers you got on one hand? Five, right? Why put more fingers on you one hand? Come on. Amen. You got 10 fingers in both hands. Amen. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't get other fingers. Amen. So in other words, we have to stay in love during these days and these times. And you've got to remember something. These are the times of affliction. Affliction, uh, if I can say it this way, a hurting pet that is hurting. Now, Louie had some teeth problem, some gum infection at one time. Boy, he was mean. My little Louie. I'd pick him up and he'd growl for every time. I'd pet him, he'd growl. We didn't understand that, so we took him to the doctor. He turned out to be had an infection, so they gave him some, some medicine for that. And Pastor Christine's been working on his teeth. And he's doing, oh, he just, he just running around, loving and jumping on you and everything. He's just back to normal, right? But notice this. Uh, I, I, you have to learn something. Hurting people will hurt you. Come on. 
There's no love behind that. There's no truth behind that. So what do you do? You pray for hurting people. You pray that they get revelation. We're praying for Putin, that Putin will get understanding, that God will draw him closer to himself, that he will get understanding because he's, he's, five, he's five inches from a button that could destroy nations. So what do we do? We pray for him. We pray, bind the devil. It's not time for this to happen. These are the activities of the Antichrist. It's not time. There's people that need Jesus. Come on. So what do we do? We stay in love, but we have to understand the times that we're living. Go with me to Luke, the 12th chapter. Oh, gosh, this is so good. Amen. God is so good. You see what I'm saying? The anointing is so precious. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke, the 12th chapter. Are you guys okay? Yes, you are. Is this truthful? Is it in love? Yes, it is. It's truthful. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke, the 12th chapter, verses 1. I love this. Are you there? In the meantime... When, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another. This is, this, is, this is awesome. He began, Jesus began to send to his house first of all. Say with me, first of all. In the midst of all the trampling of people. First of all, beware ye or beware you. Whenever you see that word ye, he's speaking to a, to a group of people that were with him, with the disciples. But you have to understand something. We're disciples now also, so he's speaking to us. Be ye, beware ye of leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Say with me, hypocrisy. hypocrisy. Now notice this, hypocrisy. Leaven of the Pharisees, he called it hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is delusions. What's going on today? Delusions. People are delusioned. They have delusions about, they don't know the truth. There's no love behind it. There's no truth. They're in delusion. Amen? Hypocrisy. What does it produce? Hypocrisy produces unrest and violent agitation. Now, get a hold of what's going on in our country. Violent agitation because of delusions that are being released by Satan. In this case, the Pharisees are being used. These are religious, a religious sect, which is, which is, well, these are the ones that put Jesus, really demanded Jesus to be killed, right? But let's keep reading. Are you with me, church? He says, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. So in other words, whatever's done in secret, if it is deception, it's a delusion, it's hypocrisy, it's a lie, it's a hate, it's going to be revealed. It's amazing what God does here. He reveals it. Now, notice this, the timing is really up to God, but you and I have to be patient for the timing, for him to be revealing these things. Now, we're going to see this year more revealing things. We're starting to see revealing things now. I'm seeing revealing things in the church. I'm seeing revealing things where, where I used to have a little cautiousness, a little red flag about certain individuals, but I would not say nothing and I would not... Uh, pre preach about it. I, I just put it on a shelf. But now I'm seeing revealing things that I had about 20, 20 to 15, 20 to 25 years ago. Why? Because they're being revealed. That's what God's doing to you by the word of God. He's revealing to you. Why? Because you're staying in truth and you're staying in love. He's revealing to you things that you've had questions and you didn't, you were just so respectful, didn't want to say anything, but that you had questions. Now, if you went ahead and blabbed it out and asked God to forgive you and say, Father, forgive me, but I understand now. There's times where preachers would preach and, and I would have questions. I'll give you a good example, which really it's, it, it was an error, but I got a little confused at a, at a moment, but then I had to pull myself back. I think Teresa was there at that church service, you remember, where they started throwing water on people. And he started throwing his bottle of water and somebody bought him a bucket, a pitcher. And I'm sitting in front, oh, I got drenched. He just threw people fall down the park, God speaking in tongues, and I'm saying, okay, okay, I don't understand this, and I got drenched, and, and I just don't understand this, God, but I didn't say anything, but I knew something in my spirit, Lord, I've never, I haven't seen another Bible, this is not Bible, I, I don't know, but they're speaking in tongues, so it's a little confusion, right? And the Lord spoke to me, he says, this is where people are turning away, trying to make something happen, 
You see what I'm saying? And so we have to remember something. This is hypocrisy. It is delusions. It, it's producing um, agitation in the church. It's confusing the church. Leaven is acting like you, like you know something, but in fact, you really don't know anything. Come on. That's what I'm telling you. If you don't know, uh, we're going to talk about it later on. If you, let's say in this church, you hear a scripture, you really don't understand it, then don't allow the enemy to turn it into leaven. Hold on to it. Oh, I feel the anointing. Say with me, amen. I feel the anointing just right now. Came right now. In other words, uh, uh, hold on to that word and say, no, no. Pastor said it. He's saying it from the Bible. I don't understand it, but, but, but amen. Amen. I, I know, God, you'll give me revelation. you give me insight. you give me insight. Instead of turning the enemy, letting the enemy use it and try to form it into leaven, which brings confusion. Amen. So leaven is acting like you know, but... In fact, you really don't know. And there are a lot of preachers that are preaching that don't know. I knew one preacher, and I'll not tell you his name, but, but I'll tell you what, he started teaching on the book of Revelation and just got off on the left. He really went so far. And I, you know, as a pastor, I get so concerned for the people. So finally I said, Lord, you have to make, you have to make it available and bring, bring, um, uh, bring me a piece about when to talk to him about this. And the Lord arranged it perfectly. Oh, man, perfect. And I had to tell him, I said, you know what? I said, you really didn't know what you're saying about this. And he got a little upset. And I said, hold, hold on, hold on just a minute. Do you know without a shadow of doubt what you're saying is truth? And finally, the Holy Ghost jerked on him. He says, no, I really don't. I said, why are you teaching it? Because once you get revelation, you're going to have to revert everything you taught. Think about the people that you're going to confuse. So he got a hold of that and he stopped teaching it. And I told him who to hook up with about learning Revelation and told him, you know, about my teachers that taught me in time Revelation. And, you know, I pray that he got a hold of it. But I had to do it as a pastor to one other pastor. But the thing that I'm trying to tell you something, you see, you see how easy leaven could have been produced in this situation simply by someone not knowing the Word of God. Leaven is acting like you know it, but in fact, you really don't know. So what do you do? Keep your mouth shut. Come on, keep your mouth shut. There are some things that you're not going to understand. And we're going to look, oh, come on, let's just go to Galatians. Go with me to Galatians, amen. Now, does that mean, you know, you're not in, the, in tune with the Holy Ghost and teaches? No, it's just that God has not revealed it or has not opened to you the inside of it, and he will. God will never leave you in the blind. Come on. God will never give somebody else something and then leave you out hungry. No, he loves us. He'll teach us all. And you probably heard it. You just didn't understand it. It doesn't mean you, that, that you're out in left field. You just don't understand it. This one it says in Galatians 11 chapter. Are you there? Oh, gosh, there's so much here. Galatians, the, 11, the second chapter. Galatians 2 verses 11. Now notice this. When Peter, are you there? Galatians 2, 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, Paul said, I would stood him to the face. That's like me talking to that pastor I told you earlier. I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Now, this is Peter, the apostle Peter. Somehow he got leaven. He was acting like he knew something, but he really didn't know. For before that certain came from James... He did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Now, now to understand that, I want you to look at verses, verses 9, B part, uh, where it says, Barnabas, the right hand of fellowship, they were kicked out of a certain synagogue, that we should go to the heathens. And they unto the circumcision. So he's saying, Paul's saying, I was kicked out of a certain group because I, they, wanted, they, they didn't want me to do it, but I ended up going to the heathens to teach them, which is the uncircumcised. But Peter was encouraged to go to the circumcision, which are the Jews. Now look at me for a moment. Paul was led to go to the Gentile world, uncircumcised world. Peter to the circumcised, was the Jewish but ultimately, the goal was to bring them all together. Amen. Thank God for that. But something happened here. He's literally confused about something, so he's eating with the uncircumcised. Now, look at this. 
Verses 12, for before that certain came with James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing that them which were the circumcision, which are the Jews. Now look at verse 13. And the other Jews dissembled them likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas, now look at this, Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Look at that word, dissimulation means hypocrisy. So here is Peter demonstrating hypocrisy in his actions, and now he has a young, young protege by the name of Barnabas is now being confused. Either you sit with this uncircumcised or you don't. In this case, while Paul wasn't around, he's, he's just enjoying himself with the, circum, the uncircumcised. How many people know that at that time they didn't assimilate? They were, they, were, they, were, they were the left hand. That's why Peter, Paul was kicked out of and gave him the, the left hand fellowship. <laughs> Amen. In other words, uh, you know, come on, you're, you're teaching wrong. No, Paul, Paul spent some time with Jesus, so he got to know the word of God. So here Peter now uh, doesn't know what to do. So, so, but the thing I want to show you that even Peter got caught up in hypocrisy. Say with me, whoa, come on church. Are you with me church? But notice this, but um, verses 13, let's just see, he was carried away with dis dissimulation, that's hypocrisy. We must discipline ourselves in the truth of the word of God and stay in love. Amen? Is this truth what we just read? Tell me, amen. Is this love? Yes, it is. Peter, had, Paul had to confront him. The word confront, he, he got in his face and said, look, straighten out. You're causing confusion. And I think, and that's love. Say to me, that's love. That's love. If you get corrected by your understanding of the word of God and you get corrected by, let's say by me or something, uh, your pastors or, or someone that we're submitted to, remember something, it's got to be supported by the word and by love. At the same time, you've got to receive it by the word and love. Because it could be that you've been trained wrong. Now, I, we were talking about that on the way over here. How there are people that have been trained wrong. And there's people that have been trained right. But then along the way, they got, up, they got hooked up with other people. And they forgot about being trained right. So now they're being in error everywhere they go. Amen? I know the word of faith is a strong movement. It's not, excuse me, I repent. It's not a movement. It is the gospel. The word of faith is the gospel of which we preach that Paul said, it's the word of faith which we preach. So it's not a movement, it's the word of faith. People have left the word of faith and said it's a movement. It's not a movement. It is the gospel of the word of faith. We believe. Say with me, I believe in prosperity. I believe in, prosperity. I believe in calling those things which are not as though they are. There's people that call, there's people that will call you heresy because you believe in finances. Isn't that dumb? You believe in prosperity. Well, if you don't believe in prosperity, just give me all your money. And I put it to work. Amen. I, and I don't, and people say, you're part of that, name it and grab it and blame it. Yeah, I, I name it, I call it in, and I grab it. Amen. Come on, amen. But there's people that will tell you, oh, you're wrong, Pastor. You're wrong. Oh, gosh. Come on. So we must discipline ourselves. Go with me to 2 Peter quickly. Hallelujah. Amen. So if Peter was caught up in this, and then um, Barnabas, uh, what was that young man? Barnabas was caught up in that. Tell me it can happen to you and me if we're not in the right place, if we're not taught right. And don't try, to, don't try to change somebody first. Pray for that person that their eyes are open. Second Peter, the third chapter. Oh, Father, we thank you. Second Peter, the third chapter, uh, verses 3. The Bible says, verse 15. Now, this is so, bear with me. Let's read it slow. Verse 15, are you, verses 15 says this. And account, well, let's read up. Let's read, okay, okay, let's read, let's read verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Say with me, amen. This is the truth. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, heaven, we're going home, guys. Be diligent that you be found of him in peace. Now, let me just say this right now. Today, we're, we're in some serious situations in, in this world, what's going on right now. But stay in peace, because your future is coming. Stay in peace. Don't get, out of, don't get out of fear. Don't get into fear. 
Don't get worried. So that's what he's saying here, right? So stay in peace without spot and blameless. And account that the, that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our brother, as our beloved Paul. Now here's where he's making it right. Beloved Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, or Paul's epistles, speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also these other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Now, what is he saying here? He, he finally got in line with the teaching of Paul. He said, I know even though this, this, we're all looking for heaven, we're looking for, for heaven to come, but maintain yourself in peace. But also understand Paul, he spoke some powerful things. Yes, it might, to some it might have been hard to understand, but he spoke some powerful things. But remember, because those that were unlearned, what does the Bible say? Those that were unlearned, they that are unlearned and unstable. Remember, perfection makes you stable. Those that were unstable rest as they do also other scriptures. So in other words, he's saying, these people that I'm telling you they're unstable, they're getting that word and they're twisting it more. Is it possible? Is this truth? Tell me, amen. Is this in love? It's in love. Peter is making it right, saying, listen, I repent and I, be I believe he repented hard and he finally realized it that, well, first of all, you got to understand something. When, when Paul started reaching the Gentiles and Peter, the, the Jews, together they came together and the gospel of Jesus Christ grew among both groups. Amen. So in other words, uh, let me read to you from the Amplified and then we're going to go ahead and, and get ready to close. Amen. He says, speaking of this as he does in all of his letters, Paul, Peter speaking about Paul, there are some things in those epistles of Paul that are difficult to understand, which the ignorant and the unstable twist and misconstrue to their own utter destruction, just as they distort and misrepresent the rest of the scriptures. In other words, uh, be quiet if you don't understand scripture, but be in a church that will teach you the word of God. Amen? Uh, are y'all with me, church? Amen? Now, I'm taking it personally. Y'all not saying amen. Tell me amen. amen. Come on, church. Amen. I thank God for that. Amen. I thank God that we're not going to go astray. And the moment that you hear me go astray, you leave this church. If I go into another field, in which I won't, I'm just telling you that it's, if I let my guard down, the devil will try to do anything he can to distort our, our relationship in the teaching of the Word of God. That's why it's so important that I submit myself to, to teachers, great teachers of the Word of God. We spent a whole week under some great teachers. Oh, gosh. My seat was telling me, you're, you're wearing your seat out. But I'm telling you what, it was so powerful. Amen. We found ways to stay al alive. We were doing this. <laughs> man, man, but it was good. Amen. Beware of the unleavened bread. Yes. Beware of the unleavened bread. Understand scripture and trust those who are in your life. Say, I trust those who are in my life. <laughs> Amen. I trust those that are in my life. I trust my spiritual parents. I trust my spiritual uncles, my, my spiritual aunts. I trust them. I trust them because they've been verified. They've been approved. They've been endorsed. Amen? That's what we got to do. Understand Scripture and trust those in your life. One of the hardest things as a pastor, and I say this, I say this truthfully in a sense where you understand this as a pastor, when new people come to church, you've got to realize you don't know where they've been and you don't know what they've been taught. But you have to be patient to allow the Holy Spirit to teach them and to learn that. I've had people leave this church because they only hear one message and they, they already judge this church by one message. Come on. I had a man uh, years ago call me, and, and I don't like to meet with people after church. And When somebody tells a pastor, I'd like to meet with you. I don't, do, I, don't, I don't meet with people. I found out that's dangerous for me. It, it's pastor, it's, it's barbecue a pastor time. And so uh, he met with me and I took him to my office and I thought he, it was going to be a good meeting. He said, Pastor, what you just said is not truthful. And I was talking about uh, speak to that mountain and cast that, uh, command that mountain to be cast and seen and she'll obey you. 
And he said, Pastor, what you just said, is, it's untruthful. You, no one can ever move a mountain. And I know what you're going to say. It's not a mountain, a physical mountain. It, it's a, it's a, it could be a, any kind of mountain si- situation. I says, I, so I figured I better listen to what he said. And I let him talk, and he said, because my mama died of cancer. We've been rebuking that mountain. And that mountain never moved. She died, so I don't believe the scripture, and I don't believe what you said today. And I asked him, I said, let me ask you a question. Do you know if your mama wanted to die or stay? He said, I don't know. I said, well, you should ask her. Maybe she wanted to go to be with Jesus. You can't work over her will. I don't care how much you pray. You can't win over her will. You cannot. She's got a will. God made her, gave her a will. So let's look at it this way. Maybe she was so much in pain and hurting, and she said, Jesus, I want to go home. Have you ever considered that? Now, she's in heaven because she's a believer. That mountain left her. She has no cancer in heaven, so that mountain left. And he kind of just put his head down. And I said, let me pray for you. And he walked out the church. I don't know if he walked out in peace. or Well, he did look peaceful, but I never saw him again. But the thing about that is these are the things that you have to realize. Amen. So the enemy uses scripture and will move people out of their feeding trough or their feeding place of where the truth and the love of the word is. And they'll go somewhere. I told an individual the other day, where you're going, does your pastor know who you are? Or you're just a, you're just a feeling in the seat? Think about that. Uh, is this, w- w- can you call him when you're sick and, and he'll pray for you? Uh, uh, tell me, it, 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 can it happen? See, see, the enemy can pull you out of a good church to put you into a unleavened church come on or eleven church can you say amen he can move you out of that he can move you out of your place and calling is it true am i telling you the truth ladies and gentlemen now am i saying this in love it is in love amen. come on church amen let's go ahead and stand up hallelujah amen did you get something out of this church hallelujah amen father we give you the praise and the glory we honor you father for truth shall set us free father and we thank you for truth in our lives in the name of jesus we give you praise We thank you, Father, for the word tonight, and we receive it tonight. And we thank you, Father, for your teaching us even more in these days that we're living in this era. And Lord, now you're teaching us how to to be discerning when when doctrine is given. Is it the truth? And is it in love? Oh, Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen Amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.